Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ultimate Atari Fight Stick from Micro Center. Now this one here has the trackball built in it. It also comes pre-installed with a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a 32GB micro SD card. Micro Center is actually offering a few different versions of this. You can pick up a version without a Raspberry Pi or trackball for $120. It's compatible with PC, Mac, Raspberry Pi, Xbox, and PS3. Or you could opt for the version with the trackball for $149.99, and this one still doesn't come with the Raspberry Pi. But at $200, you can pick up the version that we're going to take a look at in this video that includes the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and that 32GB micro SD card. And the great thing about picking something like this up is it is officially licensed from Atari, and you actually get access to over 100 Atari games with the $199 version. And right now, if you check the link in the description, you can actually pick up a free 32GB flash drive and a free 32GB micro SD card, so make sure you check that out. But before we go any further here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Micro Center. So yeah, if you're not familiar with Micro Center, then you really should be if you're a tech enthusiast. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk in, you can test out the panels if you need to buy an LCD, you can see the cases, you can put your hands on the product before you purchase it. They have stores in California, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. I've been planning on getting into one of the stores to do a full video from there, but in the last couple years they've really gotten into the SBC maker board market, which is something I'm really big into. And hopefully in the next couple months I can take a trip to my closest micro center and do a video. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments below. But either way, I'm going to leave links to Micro Center's website so you can find the closest store. And you definitely need to get in there, especially if you're into tech. So straight out of the box, I'm actually pretty impressed by how well this thing is constructed. It's definitely heavy duty. The buttons and sticks feel great. While they're not exactly haps, they are clones. So we do have those switches that we can swap out. And if you really wanted to, down the road, it's something you actually really don't need here. You could add real hap sticks and buttons. But these actually feel really good. And the movement on this trackball is just fine. Now it's really going to come down to when we get into some gameplay. But out of the box, everything is looking top notch here. It does have this locking mechanism here. And two gas struts, which is something I actually haven't seen. I'm sure it's been done in the past. But... This does come with two gas struts included so it'll hold the top up and it feels really nice. And since this is the $199 version, we do have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. It comes with a power supply, HDMI, and I did want to take a look at these buttons real quick because they do feel really nice. It's got the red switches in here that can be swapped out if you ever needed to. But to tell you the truth, there'd be really no reason to do this unless you want to get some LED or RGB buttons installed in here because everything that's included is going to work just fine. Here's a close-up of the switches on the arcade sticks, and as you can see, these can easily be swapped out also. As for the arcade button encoder being used in here, it's a genuine Zenmotec dual USB, so it basically works with everything. Windows, Mac, Linux, and I even believe it has support for Xbox and PS3. Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, if you want to go for the version without the Raspberry Pi, I would recommend throwing a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here. And towards the back, you'll see this little cutout here. This is where we're going to route our HDMI and power cable, but it also has the power switch for the Raspberry Pi. It's already mounted here, so all you need to do is reach in the back to turn this on and off. So after looking at the internals here, this thing is put together very, very well. You can swap those buttons out. You could even add a different trackball if you wanted to. It's set up really nicely. I'm a big fan of Atari, so I do love the layout here. I think it looks really good, but now we really need to see how this thing performs. So this one came with that 32 gigabyte micro SD card and it actually has noobs pre-installed. So it doesn't have RetroPie on here yet. We will have to connect online either over Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Personally, I prefer using Ethernet. But upon the first boot, it's going to bring you to the noobs setup screen. And from here, it's going to prompt you to download and install the version of RetroPie that they have set up for this thing with those pre-installed Atari games. So it's super easy to do and you can actually do everything from the trackball and the buttons. Trackball works as a mouse, so we're going to choose this RetroPie version. And one of these buttons here will allow us to select it. There we go. And we're going to scroll back down to install. It's going to automatically download it and install it to that micro SD card. Installation time can vary depending on your internet connection, but for me, it took about seven and a half minutes from here to get into emulation station. And it gives us this little status bar here, so I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up, and then we'll boot right into RetroPie. And once the installation is finished up, it's going to boot right into RetroPie or Emulation Station. As you can see, under Arcade, we have 30 games. 
Atari 2600 has 91, Atari 5200 has 12 games, and 7800 contains 10 games, and there's no reason we can't add more. This is RetroPie running on a Raspberry Pi, so as long as you know how to add ROMs over network or USB, you can load this up. So the first thing I want to test here are some trackball enabled games. We're going to head over to Arcade and I'm going to find a few here. I know these sticks and buttons are going to work out great with that Zimmo encoder, but what I'm really interested in here is that trackball. So we're going to find a trackball enabled game. We'll go ahead and start it up and we'll test it out. First one we got going here is Centipede. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. Now I'm actually not familiar with the button layout here, but this can all be mapped inside of MAME or whatever emulator you choose to use per game. And I haven't done any setup whatsoever. Trackball is working here. You may want to change the sensitivity from the MAME settings here, but uh, I mean it's usable and it feels good. I would definitely like to jack the sensitivity up a little bit on this. But overall, it is working out of the box, and these trackballs are usually detected as a mouse input device, and I will test that when I move over to Windows, but I'm pretty sure that's how this is set up here also. Next up, we have Missile Command. And the trackball sensitivity with this game actually seems pretty decent. It does seem a lot better than it was with Centipede, so it could have just been the game. But either way you look at it, sensitivity is fully adjustable from the MAME settings, and it's pretty easy to do. So I'll go ahead and back out. I'll just press Start and Select. It'll bring us right back into the Emulation Station menu. And we're going to go with an Atari 7800 game. I want to test out this joystick and buttons here. So we'll go with Dark Chamber. So far, the joysticks and buttons are working great with these Atari games, but this is known as a fight stick. I mean, usually you got two people here fighting against each other. I want to test out some 3D fighting games. So to save me some time, instead of adding games to this build of RetroPie, I'm actually just going to plug this into my Windows 10 PC and start up LaunchBox. I got a ton of games there. We'll test out a couple fighting games and see how it performs with Windows. Alright, so here we are on my Windows machine. I'm running Big Box here. All I needed to do was plug in the two USB cables to the PC. One's for the trackball, one's for the Zenmo controller. Both controllers are set up here. I did have to do a little bit of reconfiguration inside a Big Box here, but as you can see, it's working. Now, like I mentioned, they're calling this a fight stick, so let's get into some fighting games. We're going to go with some Dreamcast. First one's going to be Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And by the way, I'm using the ReDream emulator. So far, it's working really great. I'm not missing any of these special moves with Ryu, so let me go ahead and swap over to Wolverine and see if we can pull some off. I do love the feel of these buttons and sticks here. I mean, they've done a great job choosing what to put in here. And yeah, I mean, no issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and swap over to GameCube, and we're going to test out Soul Calibur 2. So with this one, I'm using the Dolphin emulator. I did have to go into the emulator settings to set up this Zenmo encoder, but as you can see, it is working with the Dolphin emulator on Windows. And since I'm here, I figured I'd test out one more. This is Gigawing for Dreamcast, and it's working great. So overall, build quality and performance on these units is great. It works with the Raspberry Pi, it works with Windows, I'm sure it's going to work with some other systems like Mac and other Linux distros. All of the buttons, sticks, and even the trackball can be upgraded. You could throw a different single board computer in here, like the XU4, the N2 if you really wanted to. Now, as for upgrading the sticks and buttons, personally, I don't see a reason to do it. These feel great, they work perfectly with that Zenmo encoder, and I'd say the only reason you'd ever really want to upgrade these is to go RGB with it. And that's definitely personal preference. If you're into that, you can always add those to an arcade unit like this. So yeah, it's definitely a solid unit. They offer it in a few different variants. You can get it without the Pi, you can get it without the trackball, so it's really up to you. 
If you've been looking into getting one of these two-player fight stick units, I would definitely take a look at this one at Micro Center. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.